Folks, welcome back to another episode of Fallen Badge. Our episode today is going to be the murder of Detective Carrie Orozco, Omaha Police Department. that little clip from one of my musical police tributes because obviously Detective uh, Orozco was the last picture and if you haven't watched that video it's a really good one really good police tribute Now, Detective Roscoe, he was born and raised in Iowa, a little town called Walnut. She was an athlete in high school, which will explain why, even after she moved to the big city of Omaha, she continued to coach youth sports I believe she worked with the Boys and Girls Club of Omaha she really was as it is it seems like with so many of these policemen she was really big in the community really had an affection for the youth of Omaha those that were disadvantaged in some way or another Now, Detective Orozco was married, had two stepchildren, or as I like to call them, bonus children. And in February, she'd had a baby. Now, the baby was a preemie, so it had to stay in the hospital for about three months. So she delayed taking her maternity leave until the baby could come home. Now she was due to be off after this last shift. The next day she was going to start her maternity leave and her and her husband and two bonus kids were going to go pick up their daughter from the hospital. And that poor little girl is never going to know what her mama looked like unless somebody shows her a picture. When I first started looking into this case, I noticed that Carrie Roscoe had the rank of detective. And I had to do a little digging around to see if that was actually a rank above a patrolman or not. In Memphis, Memphis Police Department, a detective simply means you're a patrolman that's in a position that's normally filled by a sergeant. And Memphis Police Department, uh, generally when you get promoted to sergeant, you're in an investigative bureau somewhere. It's not a supervisory rank. But I noticed that in her uniform picture, Detective Orozco's got a silver badge, and then I noticed in this Unit. She was in a fugitive apprehension unit that she's got a gold badge. So I took that to mean that detective is a rank above a patrol officer. Now she'd been in, with Omaha about seven years. 
And, of course, a lot of times uh, athletes make good police officers because they're competitive and they want to work hard and they want to win. As you might guess, in that apprehension unit, you're going after fugitives. That can get, that can get a little dicey. Now, they had a warrant for a fella, and he was a real winner. Family said he was a loving father and all-around good individual. I guess they weren't counting his time in federal prison on drug charges. I don't know how you can be a good father if you'd rather go to federal prison. He also was allegedly a gang member, so there you have it. Well, you might guess being a gang member, he's going to be involved in some nefarious activities. Well, he got out of federal prison in February of 2014. By September of 2014, he'd already shot somebody. So there was a felony warrant for his arrest. I don't know if the warrant was for aggravated assault or attempted murder. But then again, if you're in a fugitive task force, you're you're not going to be chasing wallflowers. It's May 20th, 2015. So they've got this warrant for this gang member. Now, I don't know if... When they were going to make this attempt pick up, if they were going to try to hit the house or catch him outside. I don't know if they had surveillance on him or what. I always preferred to catch him out if I could, rather than having to go into a house. Just from some of the pictures I saw, it looks like there were looked like they had a they were probably in undercover cars. So I sure saw a lot of what looked like civilian type vehicles in the crime scene and the way they were parked all over the place. It looked like they the fugitive unit was was doing some kind of surveillance. In any event, they get to Martin near the intersection of Reed. It's about a block west off of 30th Street on Martin. Now, as soon as they got out of their vehicles, because I'm, I'm I take it from what I read that they did not actually hit the house and I'm not sure which house it was from the pictures I saw it the ones I'm displaying for you now that's the area where it looked like it occurred so again I don't know if he was coming out of the house getting ready to go in the house or what but it definitely occurred outside And now he pulls up a Glock pistol with a 50-round drum magazine on it. And he starts cranking off rounds at the officers. And he takes off running. And the officers are returning fire. My understanding is, is that Detective Orozco, she hadn't actually made the scene during the first volley of fire, but that she pulled up right after that. And I'm not sure in which direction he ran, but he did run, and I don't know how far. So you had basically a running gun battle. Now he cranks off a second volley of rounds. And that's when Detective Orozco gets hit. 
and around, hits her somewhere in the upper chest above her raid vest. If you can see the, the picture that I'm displaying, that would have been the vest type she'd have been wearing. Somehow or another, it got over the vest, over the Kevlar. Now, during this firefight, the suspect is shot. He goes down. Now, Detective Roscoe's is laying in a yard, or his officers carry her into a yard, so I don't know if she went down in the street or what. They start CPR on her, and they get an ambulance. Suspect is hit. He's down. They find him in the rear of a neighbor's house. I don't know exactly where. I just know it's within that block. Now they're both transported to Crichton University Medical Center somewhere around 1 p.m., so you would think this shooting probably occurred at 12.45 p.m. or so. Now Detective Orozco dies and the suspect dies. Now besides that 50 round drum magazine that the suspect had, he also had a 15 round magazine in his pocket. So nothing he was carrying was legal. My understanding is 15 round magazines are police only. And I can certainly assure you that that 50 round drum magazine's not something he's supposed to have. But you consider he's a convicted felon. Now, according to the autopsy, Detective Roscoe, the round that killed her, Again, it was just above the, the Kevlar of that tactical vest that she was wearing. Went into her chest, went through the body, and then it hit the, actually hit the back panel of the Kevlar vest and stuck in the, in the Kevlar. So I don't know at the time this is going on if she's getting out of a car when she gets hit. Maybe she stooped over or, or something. You just can't tell if a bullet when it hit. She might have been standing fully erect and the bullet just hit and traveled down. Detective Carey Sue Orozco, end of watch, May 20th, 2015.